Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm just doing a quick tutorial on this like retro style circle skirt layered apron. Um, I originally actually used this pattern which is Quick Sew K172. Um, so that's how it originally looked and then I have made some modifications to make it more exciting, I personally think. But so if you'd like to see how I do it, stay tuned. Alright guys, so I have cut it all out. Um, I do things a little bit differently. So I cut out the same basic pieces for the the, the bib and the um, layers of the skirt. However, on the corners, so this is the fold here, on the corners, I just round the edges um, so that I can go in one continuous sweep. So it actually comes with pointy edges. It ends edges sorry it's late and I can't speak apparently um, and then I've just yeah grabbed scissors and just rounded the corner out um, so however that works for you you can take a little bit or a lot um, and then I've got a binding around all of mine so for the three layered or well, three tiered skirt you need seven two inch pieces by width of fabric and I use quilting cotton um, if you're using a poplin, my suggestion would be cut it on the bias, but the quilting got, um, cotton has enough give that you can get away without having to cut it on the angle. And then I cut two 3-inch strips and two 6-inch strips. I will write all of this down in the um, description anyway. But So these are the two straps, and then one of these is your waistband, and the other one is your two um, neck straps. So, the first thing I do is I'm going to join all of this pretending I'm going to make bias tape. Because I basically am, but without the bias cut. Um, so what you do is you put them on a 90 degree angle, so like that, and then I'm going to stitch diagonally. Um, and I just do these as a chain stitch. So then I'm going to grab it, flip it over so that the top's sitting up, and then get the next piece and put it face down and then stitch that one. So I do this for all seven pieces um, and I'll actually stitch all of this stuff and then go to the iron and you're going to come with me for that because I'm going to show you how I iron everything as well. So I'm just flipping it over in my hand to make sure that the um, I'm stitchi stitching them all the right way. Wow, I really can't speak tonight. So it goes up and over onto itself, so this is the right side. Um, I find I'm using homespun from Spotlight, so the homespun quilting cotton. I find it doesn't really have a right and a wrong side, so I don't have to think about that. It'll be a lot easier to tell if you're using a print for your edging, um, which I have done in the past and does look amazing. Okay, so now that's all of your binding. So I'm going to take my scissors and then I'm just going to separate them because I chain stitched it and then I just chop off this excess. So I come up a little bit and I want to leave about a quarter of an inch so it has a chance to flatten out. If you stitch it too closely it won't flatten out. So I'm just going to stitch all of these or cut all of these really quickly. Um, I usually just make a big pile of mess on my table and then push it into the bin. You may also notice I've had a bit of a rearrange in my sewing room. So somebody come to visit me and suggested that instead of having the machines in the center that I make them a U shape. So I've got my overlocker behind me, my embroidery machine is now right next to me, and then I've got my 3D printer just to the other side of me. Alright, so that's all of those. Pop all those in the bin and then we'll set that aside and now we're going to grab our straps. So I'm going to grab one of the three inch pieces, chop it in half and then set that aside. So that is the waistband for everything. If I can get the scissors in there, there we go. So that's the waistband, so I'm just going to sit that over there. And then this one is going to be two straps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half 
and then I'm going to stitch diagonally down and then all the way down and do the same diagonal at the other end. So this is going to create a pointy strap. If you want a square strap, just don't do the point, basically. Um, and I find that this is the quickest way to make them. So when I get to this middle fold, this is the center of the fabric here. So I'm just going to back stitch on that section because I am actually going to chop that in half. And then just continue down. Now, if you're a beginner sewer, feel free to pin this. But I have literally made hundreds of these. So I'm just near the end, so then I'm just going to run diagonally off like that. Oh, you can't really see it. There you go, put it on the angle. So now I'm just going to chop off that excess at that point, and then chop off the excess at the other point, like so, and then fold it in half, like that, and then snip in the center. Now this won't fray because we backstitched right in that middle bit, which may have seemed weird at the time, but now I've got two straps that works out really well. So now these are going to be individual straps, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fold it in half, and then I'm going to sew diagonally. Now, again, I've made this so many times that I can eyeball the diagonal, uh, but feel free to mark it with chalk or a tent pen, texture, anything really. And I'm just using a two and a half stitch length for this whole thing. I don't change my stitch length for the apron at all. So I'm just lining it up in sections and then sewing along. Get to the end and back stitch just to lock it in and then I'm going to chain stitch the next one. So when I'm not on camera, I would actually chain stitch all of this and then do the snipping at the end. Um, but I thought that might be a little bit too difficult to kind of follow along with. And then back stitch at the end. And so then I can separate them and chop off that excess at this point as well. So again, I'm leaving about a quarter of an inch. I don't want to take it all off because that just won't be handy. Now, to turn them out, let me move the camera so you can see this better. To turn out the little ones, I use my flute cleaner. So I'm gonna stick that between my legs and grip it so it's, it's pressing down on the chair and then I'm holding it still with my legs. And then I'm going to stick my fingers into the center of here. And I'm going to pinch the seam with one hand and then opposite on the other. And then I just push that down over the flute cleaner. And it turns, I don't know if you can see that, but it's turning the tube inside out. That is the quickest way I have found to turn these. And then with the last little end bit... I just use my sew all and I dig into that corner and kind of just flick it out. So you don't want to go too hard because you don't want to wreck your stitches in there. You just want to flick it out so it's a nice point. And sometimes you've got to do the other end as well. So there's one. So I'll see if I can do it a little bit higher for you. So again, I grab on the inside with my thumb. And so I'm, I'm trying to turn it out, but obviously my fingers don't fit. So I slide it over the top and then just pull down. And the loop is turned. So I don't know. If you don't have a flute cleaner, I'm sure you could find something else to use that's long and skinny just to put pressure on. And the, the beauty of this is because it's like a rounded wooden edge, it's not going to stab through your seams at all. Now to turn these ones, the easiest way i found is like socks, you gather it all up. Because it was a six inch piece, there is quite a lot of room to do this. So I gather it all up till I get to almost the end. And then I'm going to grab the end like this with my fingers, all the way to the end. 
and then I'm just going to push that bit into my fingers and then just pull it off and turn it out. That last little bit you can just pull out. But again, that's the quickest way I have found to do it. You may have a quicker way, I'm not sure. But I have, yeah, I've made hundreds of these aprons. Um, and when I'm not explaining them, I can usually make them in about 40 minutes, give or take. So again, the other one. So we just wanna gather it up like a sock. Also, the electronic noises that you can hear, or probably hear in the background, I assume you can hear them, is the 3D printer. I am printing my first skull bowl to see if it's successful. All right, so I'm at the end, so push that into my fingers and then just pull it off and through. All right, so now we're gonna go over to the iron. I'm gonna show you how we do all of this ironing. I'm gonna start with a small strap. So I put it on the iron ironing board oh my god i really can't speak so i actually iron the board because i find that this will stick easier so then i'm going to put pressure and just roll the seam up to that edge i find that it sticks better if the ironing board is warm i don't know why but it does so i'm just rolling that seam to the edge and then pressing it down now if you wanted to you could just leave the straps like that but i will actually be top stitching that because it means less ironing in the long run. So again, the ironing board's already hot from the last one, so I'm just gonna roll it with my fingers and then press it down. Please be careful not to get your fingers. I say this from experience, it hurts. Now I've ironed in that one and it's a little bit curvy. So what I'm now gonna do is grab the end, stretch it out, and then iron it flat. So then we do the same to the, the big ones. You don't need to see me do that again. And then we're gonna do the bias tape. So I have this bias tape maker. I actually used to have the electronic machine, which is what this one used to click into, but I use it so much I broke it. And you're also going to want probably a sew all. It's what I use anyway. So we find an end. There's an end. And we wanna make sure that it's facing up the right way. Then I'm going to feed it in. And you can see this little slide bit here, it shows itself. So you just use your sew all to push it further through till it comes out the other end. And then you can just pull on it. Now, some people iron it upside down like this. I iron it the other way. It's just, I don't know. It might be easier because it's the way the machine does it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stick my iron on the end and then just follow the iron with the bias tape maker. So I'm just gonna pull it slowly. You don't wanna go too fast or it won't iron properly. And then I come back, put the iron down, readjust the fabric and go again. So I'm gonna not make you watch this, but I'm gonna do this for all um, seven pieces, which is about eight meters. And uh, then I'll show you what we do after that. I forgot to mention this is a one inch bias tape maker. So I cut two inches here for one inch and our ultimate goal is to have half inch double fold bias tape. So now I'm just gonna gather it all up and throw it back to the left side of me on the floor because I'm classy like that. And then I'm gonna come, and this first little bit's usually always dodgy. So now's the time where I chop it off so I don't have to deal with it. And then I'm going to fold this in half again and then iron it again. So I find the easiest way for me to do this in a line is I stick my pointer finger in the center and then just kind of loop it around like this to help it fold in half. And I just run my hand, you can't really see, I might change the angle, but I just run my hand along with the iron following behind. Let me change the angle angle the board so you can see. So I put the iron on it and then I'm just going to hold it like this and move it along. And what this is doing is my finger in the center and then my thumb here is automatically folding it in half. So then I go and do all of this along the way. 
Now, if you want to skip this step, you can just go and buy double folded bias tape. Um, but after making X amount of aprons, it does become quite pricey to get it pre-made. So I use 75 or 80 centimeters or something of this purple color and it matches my straps, which is another thing I like. Um, I want things to match. But yeah, you, if you want to skip this step, you can buy double fold bias tape or you can buy one inch single fold and then just do this last step. Uh, whatever floats your boat, depending on how much time you've got, I guess. All right, so I'm going to finish up ironing this and then we'll head back to the machine. Okay, we're all ironed. Now I'm going to start with my top stitching of my straps. Now you can skip this step. Uh, but every time you wash it, you're going to have to iron these because they won't sit flat like this. So by top stitching them, they will sit flat. So I'm just doing one eighth of an inch from the edge. You also notice I haven't taken off my Teflon foot. Um, I could have, I don't need to, so I didn't bother. I always make sure I backstitch at the start and the end. Uh, and I'm also going to chain stitch these because it's quicker and I waste less thread. I'm actually using overlocker thread in my machine because my industrial machine will take it. Then I, now that I'm up to the twisting part, I'm just going to chop this one off and hang it to one side. So it's actually hanging on my zipper jig. Now I know I'm going to have enough thread for this because I literally did a brand new bobbin for this video. So I'll be very disappointed if I do run out. Oh, I have a random thread. Don't stitch that in. So when I get to the corner, I always make sure my needle is in the down position so I can pivot without losing my spot. race through this just because I am. I originally bought this machine because it was faster than a domestic. So it was easy to make bags and these aprons went way quicker. But I always slow down towards the end because there's you would hate to run off. Then you have to fix it. Alright. So the way I'm stabilizing this, I probably should tell you this, is I'm actually letting it run against uh, like this part of my fingers. So I'm holding that where, like in line with the stitching, and then this one's just a guide so it doesn't run away on me. I like to have two hands in contact with the fabric. I feel like I'm in more control, I guess. Alright, so now I'm going to take my giant pile of double folded uh, tape, it's not quite bias tape, um, and I have opted to have three different coloured layers because I think it's going to work really well with Jack Skellington. So we're going to do the bib last because it's actually the hardest part. So I'm just going to start with one of my circle aprons. So again, you can see I've rounded this corner so that I can just do it in one continuous go. So I want to have it right side up and then I'm going to grab my double fold bias tape and literally just put the fabric in between and fold it over and then we can just top stitch it. So it is very important that when you iron it in half that you're nice and accurate. You don't want to be too far out because then it won't fold on nicely like this. So again, we're going to back stitch at the start and then I'm just going to line up a little bit, hold it with my hands and stitch, always stopping with the needle down. Now, if you're a beginner sewer, I would suggest that you could wonder clip or pin this until you become confident enough to work it around. So this is a tight corner, so you can see I'm just doing it 
a little bit at a time, but as we get to the big curve, you can do longer bits. So again, I'm just making sure it's not twisted or tangled. And around we go. Now, obviously the smaller ones are tighter curves, so as they get bigger, they feel straighter and you can do bigger pieces at a time. So just so you know, there's the join for the first, um, like, meter. So you do use a lot of this. I cut seven pieces to make these aprons. So that is approximately eight meters of double fold bias tape you need to purchase if you don't want to make it yourself. But then you only need 18 inches or just under half a meter for all your straps. So then I'm going to get to the end, I'm going to back stitch, and then I'm going to grab my next one and just join it in. I'm going to back stitch that one too, stop with my needle position down, and then I can just come and chop that one off. So that one is now edged. So front and back, no raw edges, except here, but we haven't finished. So I'm gonna hang it on my chair and do the next one. And this one had a longer straight bit, so it looks like I'm going faster. I'm not really. As I'm going around that corner, I'm kind of pushing it with my hand so that it feels like it's straight, even though we're very aware that it's not. It's also handy to have this out flat. And I'm sorry if the stripes look funny on camera. I didn't really think that through. So again, you just want to pop it in, hold it down with your fingers, Again, or you can pre-pin or wonder clip this. Um, I just found that this is much easier for me to make them. So when I first started making these, they took me about four hours. Took a lot of practice to get this fast. I'm also gonna bunch this up here so that the weight's not hanging off my table. Uh, because it was pulling on it and making it harder to do this. So again, we're up to the tight curve part. So I'm just feeding it through nice and slowly. And then the last straight. And then back stitch and put the next one in. I do love these aprons with the layers because you can do any number of combos. So if you're in my sewing group, you would have seen that I posted one that was um, sugar skulls and then the middle layer was the purple polka dots. This one being Jack Skellington. I did Jack Skellington on the first top layer and then I did the stripes because it's very Jack Skellington and then the purple polka dots on the bottom. I'm also now just going to chop this one off so that it's not weighing me down and again throw it over my shoulder and hang it on my chair. So I promise you'll have enough. Doing this last one you, you get a little bit worried you're going to run out. Uh, but. You won't, I promise. If you've done as many as I suggest, you'll be fine. See how that one's, I can do longer pieces? It's because the curve's bigger. So it's easier to do. about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the fold. 
I don't know if you can see that, but it's pulling because it come off the table. So I'm just going to take that weight and fold it over onto itself so it stops it. Makes it much more difficult when it's trying to fight you. Home stretch. Okay, so the bib's the hardest because it's got the pinch point part for the love part. Now, I'm just going to, so I've got a join here. I don't need to have a join. So I'm actually gonna lift this out instead of chain stitching, chop it off, and then start from the other end of my tape. Now, if you've embroidered your bib, if you've got an embroidery machine or done some applique and stuff, back it with another piece. So how I would do that is I'd probably just get a plain purple, stick it on the back and then baste it right at the edges just so it feels like one piece. Then I'm going to pop this in the center of the bias. Back stitch at the start because I always like to lock my stitches in. And we're going to do the same thing. Now, slow and steady wins the race. This is pretty much a continuous curve. So I'm just feeding it in a little bit at a time. Now I'm getting close to that center point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down and pinch it. And you probably can't see that. So let's zoom you in. You know what, hold on. Okay, so that again is, so we've got, I don't know, about an inch and a half until we get to that point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push down and I'm gonna pinch it so it overlaps on itself. And then, and this might vibrate, so for that I apologize. I'm going to come down to the point, needle down, and then pivot. So again, we want to make sure that all of that excess fabric goes into there. Underneath, and then we can stitch up the other way like so. Now, if you missed a bit on the back, that's okay. Um, I've missed a little bit here. So what I'll do is I'll finish going around and then we'll come back and fix it. Now I'm going to move you off the table. Okay, so I'm just going to continue around. Now sometimes I get that pinch first go. Sometimes it takes me a couple of goes and sometimes I have to take it out of the machine. So I'll back stitch. I'll get to that end, back stitch, take it out, pinch it, and then go back and stitch it. That one wasn't my friend because it turns out I had a join at that end. So I grabbed the wrong end. That was that join I deliberately didn't want and I managed to get anyway. All right, chop that off. So then when I come back here, you can see, see I just missed there. So all I'm going to do is push it down. Now that I can lift it out and kind of manipulate it more, I'm going to push it down and then just stitch over that section again. Oh, hold on a sec. Right, my 3D printer just ate what it was designing. That's annoying. Okay, so you just make sure you back stitch there. And so now, I have a nice pointy bib. I'm just gonna chop off these tails now. So now we're going to grab those two pieces we chopped in half at the start. or well, that one piece that we chopped in half. So these are now going to be our waistband. So to find the center, you just obviously fold it in half. Now you can either clip it or you can just fold it. Because it's just cotton by itself, like a single layer, you can just fold it. And then we're going to do the same to here to find the center. Now this being a lighter weight poplin, it won't fold as well. So I've done a little clip. And then we're just going to put, now you would put right sides together if my fabric had some. Then I'm just going to take a wonder clip and another wonder clip. I'm gonna take three. 
Uh, feel free to take more and you can also use pins instead. And then I'm just going to match the other one up because we cut them the same size. So I can just add that in to my clips. And now I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch all the way along. Actually, it looks like it's more like, more like three eighths of an inch. So now we should have a piece front and back. So that's going to hide all of our seams, which will be lovely. Okay. So now we take all of our um, skirt sections and then we're going to layer them from biggest to smallest. One, two, and three. And then we're going to match them up and baste them all together so that this becomes one piece instead of three because it's much, much easier to deal with one piece. So line all those edges up. And again, I'm just going to baste them. I am still going to backstitch because I don't want it to come undone. And then just baste all the layers together. This, so you can skip this step. You're just going to have to do a lot more pinning. So you can just pin all the layers together if you want. Save yourself some thread, but my way saves yourself some time. So I'm just lining them all up as I go. I'm making sure I backstitch again just to lock them in. Trim off any tails. And so now I've got one skirt piece which is just layered. So that's much easier. So now we're going to fold that in half and find our center. So keeping in mind that this is a circle skirt, you might want to come along like this to make sure you get the actual center. And you can either clip it or put a pin in it or put a wonder clip there, however you're marking things. And then we're going to take this piece. Now we've already put our crease for our center, so I'm just going to match that center up with this center. So now I'm just going to grab some clips and come around. And it is advised that you clip this because you're trying to attach a straight to a curve. So my advice would be to clip it, but it's ultimately up to you. And, the, and it's deliberately meant to go past the end, which is why we're clipping it and not just stitching it. So then we can do the other way as well. Okay, so now we've got this, now we're just going to stitch it. So I always stitch it with the skirts side up. I don't know why I find it easier. I can't tell you why. You're welcome to do it from the other way. I just find this way easier. Uh, when I used to do it from the other way, I used to um, catch the layers under this stitching and then I'd have to unpick stuff. So I discovered that this way was much easier because all I have to do is make sure that that straight piece is out of my way. And then backstitch. So now it's starting to actually look like an apron. So make sure you trim your tails as you go. You don't want them sticking out. That's annoying. All right. So now I'm going to grab my large um, straps, so the thick ones, which should be just under three inches. Now, I always like my points to face the top piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that along, and I'm just going to stitch it or we'll tack it to here. Now, these are deliberately bigger, so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna fold it on itself and make a little pinch. So you can either have the pinch facing up or the pinch facing down, so you would hold it that way and then layer it over the top. So that way is obviously down, that's where the skirt is. So I personally like it down. 
I'm just gonna tack that on there. And then I'm gonna flip the apron around and do the other side. So we're only attaching it to this piece. We don't want to fold the other piece over as well. So again, I want the point facing up. So this one will sit the opposite way in your hands. And I want my pinch facing down like that. And then again, just tack it down. Probably should have backstitched at the start of that. Now this next part is the longest part, or the, not even the longest, the trickiest, I guess. So we're gonna turn it face down. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this one down and then we're tucking this raw edge up and under and then pinning it there. So we're actually gonna stitch it closed from the front and we're gonna stitch in the ditch. Uh, so stitch in the ditch means stitch along the other seam line. So by tucking this under, I'm going to hide all the raw edges. Now, from personal experience, the best way to put in the pins is stab them in and then towards the top. If you put them in the other way, they don't hold on to it and then you've got to come back and re-stitch it. So I'm going to just put two there to kind of hold it in place. Then I'm going to tuck this excess, so this whole end, I'm going to tuck under to be in line with the edge of the skirt. So I want this to just come straight up like that. So I tuck it over so it touches there. And then I just fold this top bit over because, again, we're hiding all of our seams. And then I'm going to put in two pins. You can put more if you feel it necessary. There is no law that says it only has to be two. And before I put the second one, I'm also going to tuck up that bottom And then pin all of that down so that we've got no raw edges anywhere. And so when I top stitch that, it's going to catch all of the pieces and look beautiful. And then again, so I'm just going to tuck it under and then put my pin down and then towards the top. You'll also notice with my pins that I'm not pushing them all the way up like this. You don't want the heads to be in the way. So you just want to use the end of the pin. So if you're using really short pins, I don't advise big balls on the short pins or they'll get stuck in your machine as you're trying to stitch it. So again, I'm just going to press, turn under and hold with a pin. Now the reason that this is the trickiest part is because you need to make sure that you're not catching the skirt layers from the other side because um, they have a tendency being circles to kind of scrunch up under. So you just want to make sure that you're not catching the skirt. But you can tend to feel it. So I can feel there's not any extra layers. So I'm just going to fold it under and tack it. I've tried pins that go in this way and it just doesn't hold. Okay, so now I'm up to the last little bit. So again, I'm going to take my strap and I'm going to fold it so it's in line there. And then I'm going to take this excess here and fold it down so that my fold is on this seam and that it's nice and even front and back and then put a pin in it to hold it in place. Then I'm going to tuck up under this raw edge here and then pin it. I know it looks like a lot of fabric, but because there's no interfacing anywhere, it's not too thick and your domestic machine can definitely go over it. I have made lots of these on a domestic before I got my industrial. So I'm nearly done. I'm not usually one to do a lot of pinning, but you'll notice I've pinned this a lot. And the reason is, is because I would like to pin lots and then stitch once, rather than have to come back and re-stitch all the parts I've missed, because that's not ideal. So now I'm going to stitch it from the top. So I'm going to start at my short edge here.
couple forward, couple back to lock them in. And then down to the join where the waistband meets the skirt. And then you're going to stitch in that ditch. So I'm just going to make sure that the skirts aren't falling underneath it. And I'm just going to follow my stitch line. As you can see, slow and steady wins the race with this. Whoop. Right, just snapped a needle. That's actually never happened on this machine before. So there you go. Luckily for me, I have another one. So I'm using Schmetz Round Shank. These ones actually come from Spotlight. They sell these, which is kind of nice. All right, so I'm just going to re-thread that. Go find where I was up to, which was here. Wow, that made a proper mess of the pin. All right, that's okay. Will not deter me. Stitch just to lock in our stitches and then away we go again. So I'm just going to go a little bit slower over my pins. But you know, never happened to me before. Oh well. It's clearly not deterred me in the slightest. I only pull out the side ones because they create a crease, which I do not like. So we're going to back stitch there. And then come along and pull all of our pins out. Now I've got a magnetic pin board, which is super fun. So I can kind of just toss it at them. If you've made your own pin cushion, my life suggestion or life hack is fill it full of steel wool, like a really fine grade steel wool. So every time you stab your needles in, they're getting sharper, not more and more blunt, which means they'll last you longer. Unless you squish them all like I just did. All right, there's the tail from the other end. So now we just need to attach our top straps. So I like my points to be on the outside. So that's how I've got that. I'm gonna start with this one here and I'm just gonna fold over that raw edge so that it would be towards the front. So then I'm just going to position that there. Now I've done this enough times. I tend to know where they need to live. Um, but the pattern does actually have placements for this for you. And so I'm just gonna do two lines of stitching. I just lifted up my foot. I didn't cut the cords between the first and the second one because I can trim them off now and I find that easier. So that's one. Then I'm going to take the other one and make sure that my point is facing out and fold that forward. And then I'm gonna fold this in half so that I get my strap in the exact position as the other one. So there, then I'm gonna fold it back over, stitch it under. So I'm gonna back stitch, stitch around, back stitch, then lift, come over here, stitch, making sure I back stitch. And that's it guys, that is your apron done. After you trim off all of these, of course. I hope that was somewhat helpful. Um, but yeah, there you go, one, Awesome apron. Till next time, guys. Bye.